Hey folks, it's Andrew from Gemba Red. Uh, hopefully we're going to be wrapping up uh, the series on pulsed panels soon. You, you can go back and check out all the different panels and you can see uh, how much extra work and diligence and uh, measurements need to be taken in order to really verify that these are correct. And again, the main feature is the hertz that we want to make sure they're at least delivering the right hertz and then um, the problematic kind of messaging that they say the hertz itself will, will confer benefits but they're really dropping the intensity and the output when most of the science will use higher intensity peak outputs for the pulsed mode um, as as that's a real advantage of, of pulsing you can increase the peak pulse and, and still have um, not overheat the, the skin um, so we're going to test out these 9,999 hertz panels and see if they actually can deliver it, right? Uh, you know, why would you want a panel that, that has 9,999 hertz? I don't really know. There's not, I don't, I haven't seen any studies that use 9,999 hertz, but I believe it's, it's more of a FOMO type thing that, um, you know, if you can give the customer all these extra features and all these extra, uh, uh, you know, uh, modes that maybe in the future in a couple years if a scientist stumbles across oh wow we got some magical benefits at 9997 you know then you'll say oh thank goodness i got that panel with uh you know 9999 so i think it's more of a fomo thing which again is is you know not a good reason to um make your purchasing decisions based on FOMO or you know a lot of, a lot of companies kind of leverage um, having exclusive things like patented things or they say it's proprietary in every other sentence uh, you know and again those uh, most of the time those those aren't really backed up with real evidence so um, that's part of the thing is we you know actually a lot of times having slower pulses is, is more ideal um, we can see here we've got two different flicker meters. We'll look at the, and we've got um, the Sadie panel going at 10 hertz. Um, but again, you know, we can appreciate the flicker kind of waveform, this this pulse waveform. This is the time, again, this is a real time display. Um, so this is the time when it's off and then it's back on and then off again. And that off time, even if it's at 10 hertz, so it's, we're, you know, we're on a scale of, uh, you know, tenths of a second here. Um, you know, so it's on off, on off 10 times per second. So you can see, uh, you know, this is literally, you know, we're, we're on and off 10 times per second. And, uh, that's just what Hertz means. And that off period is that that's kind of what makes it kind of special is that it gives your, your cells maybe just enough time to cool off a little before that next bump back up. And that's why they raise the peak power. Um, so again, so you're off during these times, and a lot of times I was just listening to the PBM Foundation. They had a um, a really good speech on Rumble, and uh, they were saying they preferred the the lower hertz because it gives you know maybe I think because it gives you that good cooling time. As you increase the hertz, you are gonna actually you know have less time that it's off to get that cooling. So. Um, you know, there are a couple studies that use what's called like pul um, super pulsed and those super pulsed, um, again, is with a laser with, and they're really cranking up that peak. So, you know, again, you might see studies, you might see some people say, oh my God, yeah, you got to get that super pulse. Um, when the super pulse is again, in the context of a laser, they're cranking up the power a lot. So again, they're, they're making claims out of context. So let's look at, we, we want to test out, can we actually do 9,999 hertz, even though, like I said, might be preferable to use slower hertz anyway. Oh, 10 hertz has been very successful. Again, just less having that off time be a little bit longer compared to higher frequencies. So I'm going to bump it up to 400 hertz and see if we can get a good result. It takes a second for me to program. A 
Okay, so I just reprogrammed the SATI panel for the 400 hertz, and we can see something interesting happen. It does verify we are at 400 hertz, so it, it's reaching up to that point, and the SATI panel does hit the, the hertz, you know, setting, so, you know. Um, this one actually hits it, but we can see you know, it's kind of the, the frequency is more just like a really crazy kind of squiggle um, And then I'm gonna check it on my viso meter, too Let's see if I can get the same measurement and again, we're verifying with different sources. Yeah, so the viso This is a professional grade meter It does confirm we're at 400 Hertz uh, pretty much right on the dot. So that's pretty impressive and um, the flicker percentage is 54%. So I think they are, they're not actually doing the full 0% um, cycle. So, you know, again, I think it gets really tricky. Can these LEDs, it's not dropping all the way to zero anymore. Um, so it's, it's a completely kind of different concept and waveform uh, when we're getting at these higher frequencies. Again, we don't know why you would want that, but you know, um, so this one reliably goes up to 40, 400, and then somewhere after 400, um, it doesn't seem to work anymore. So I'm going to set it. So I set it to 501 uh, frequency, and we can see this this meter really just flatlines the the radex loop and meter just flatlines it uh, it thinks it's pretty much continuous now now let's check the viso maybe the radex loop is at the end of its um kind of uh, useful life here you know maybe it can't do very high frequencies so this one actually yeah we get we get a higher frequency it's saying it's 526 maybe i'll remeasure in case there's a glitch actually yeah it says 500 hertz right on the, the nose so that means the radix lupin uh cannot measure the the higher frequency so then we got to switch over to a viso which again is two thousand dollars our company's gonna invest in a two thousand dollar just flicker only meter just to, to have it but again their flicker percentage is super low so it is almost continuous because you're not even getting much of a flicker percentage it's more of a kind of a it's it is more of a flicker than a pulse anymore because your flicker index is very low your flicker percentage is very low so actually the radix lupin is kind of reading it correctly because we've lost a lot of the resolution of the flicker so it is kind of flatlined um, we do get a little bit of that that pulse but it's not a real pulse anymore so again we can see how complicated it gets and it, you know we got up to the higher frequencies it's very low flicker percentage uh, or pulse percentage so you're not really getting the real output um, or you're you're not really doing a real pulse anymore Now I'm trying. I'm just gonna just jump right to 9,999 and see what we get. Okay, it's set. So it takes a second to, to set up. Now it's running, and again, you know, it's it's really flat. It's just flat lined here on the uh, radix loop and it can't really tell anything so um, let's see if the viso can give us something so the viso is reading 119 hertz and uh, you know again we can use some logic if it's measuring 119 what does that mean it's reading our normal uh, flicker frequency it's reading our AC cycle 
you know, it's just twice the AC cycle. So where it's just defaulted, the flicker percentage is very low. So there's almost no flicker, there's no pulse. And it just thinks it's a normal continuous uh, with a very slight influence of the AC grid. That's what we normally see when we measure for flicker. You just see some remnant of the 120 Hertz from the AC cycle. So again, there's really no discernible um, pulsing at 9,909. You're not getting that all the way up to there. Uh, again, around 400, it just keeps getting more and more continuous. Um, so again, you're really not getting the output that you were promised, and uh, just doesn't even doesn't even make sense. Even if you know you wanted that output, what would you use it for? Or are you just waiting for? Um, again some science to to catch up with all these random claims and again it's kind of a micro example of like you make all these claims and all this FOMO but then what you know what's what's the practical purpose so we're going to try to do the um, this is the idea light and this one's interesting because around 70 hertz is when it doesn't give me any more of a reading. It's really annoying to set this. Okay, so I set it to 69 right now. So we're at 69. Um, the Radex Lupin is happy, it's measuring 69. Um, the Viso's happy, that's, that's confirmed 69. Um, so, you know, it's okay. And yeah, we've got, like I said, it's just got a weird short duty cycle, so it's not a full um, duty cycle. And I can creep up Now I set it to 71, and we fully flatlined. We're like fully continuous, even at 71, where at least the other panel like made it up to almost 400. The idea light doesn't even make it past 71, and it switches to continuous. Let's let this take a measurement too. Yeah, it's just reading, like I said, it's just reading the AC cycle. It's 121 hertz. It does not detect the what we set as a pulse frequency. So again, we can assume anything above 70, um, this thing's not doing. So it claims to do 9,999. Doesn't reach it, just switches to just a flat output. Um, there's, no, there's no pulsing or not even a remnant of trying to pulse at this point. So again, you know, it's, they're promising you these big ranges. They're not delivering it. Uh, it'll be really concerning if companies start rebranding this and saying they have ultra high uh, pulse frequencies when nobody's verifying it. So again, keep your keep your eyes out. Um, you know, I liked the uh, I, uh, red dot was a different panel. The the red dot panel. At least they were self aware and they only limited it to. Um, going from 1 to 20 hertz because they knew that was the capability of their pulsing. So again, these companies need to be more self-aware and not program past, you know, or not make claims that you can go past a certain number. If their limit for this one is 70, then just set it to 70 and, and not let the, you know, not give people false false claims and false hopes. So hopefully that helps and uh, hopefully this wraps up all the testing on pulsing. You can see how much of a minefield it's going to be uh, even in a, in a year or two from now when companies are rebranding it and they, they're not verifying things and they're just going to make up stuff as they go along. Thanks for tuning in.